and welcome into the college basketball tip-off show here powered by wagertalk.com happy holidays to you and yours as we look to wind down uh the non-conference portion of many many uh schools schedules here as we wind down 2023 but we've got a, a really good slate of basketball games coming up here today in fact uh, about a half a dozen or so games uh, already underway right now. A few more just tipping off. But I love the late slate here tonight. And we're going to break down some of those games, have a couple of best bets for you here as we head into the holiday weekend. And good us, we get to do it with two of the best here at wagertalk.com when it comes to handicapping the college basketball slate or the nhl slate or the nfl slate you name it uh we've got you covered here and bl brian leonard is uh already it's i love the way you're you're meowing at me there without your lips moving and by the way it's fantastic brian i don't know how you're doing it fantastic but let you start us off here on a game tonight that i kind of like this game maryland taking on ucla not uh, two teams that just aren't quite where they thought they would be or hoped they would be, but in many aspects, both kind of starting over. Uh, what are you thinking about this uh, this game here tonight? I think it's what, three, three and a half is what UCLA is laying. I got to tell you, Joe, you bring out the worst in my cat. Every time he hears your voice, <laughs> he, 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 he thinks you're related or something because he starts, yeah. start, starts talking. <laughs> he was quiet the whole time as I was waiting. Uh, yep. It's Terrapins underplay at seven to four on the season, but they're just three and eight ATS. Uh, they're off a perfect three and zero homestand. This is just a third true road game of the season. They dropped the two previous at Villanova by seventeen and at Indiana by twelve, uh, giving up actually uh, scoring forty and fifty three in those two games. Uh, Maryland offenses look fine when they played at home, but not very good when they've gone on the road. Even in the neutral games, and I already talked about the 40 and the 53 they scored in the true road games. In neutral games, they've only managed 61 and 63 points. Now they got to play the second game in four days with a cross-country trip to Los Angeles. Uh, not the best of situations for the Terrapins here. Uh, the Bruins are at 5-5 five and five on the year, while only cashing three times. They've been a little bit of a disappointment, but to their credit, they face some pretty good competition in Marquette, Gonzaga, and Villanova. UCLA enters play having lost three straight games with the start of conference play after the holidays. So this game to me is much more important to the Bruins than it is to Maryland. Maryland may be going out on the West Coast trying to get a little bit of sun. I know here in Vegas it's raining today, so maybe it's raining in California also. But um, temperature is a little bit better in California than it would be in Maryland this time of year. Uh, Bruins are only allowing 62.8 points per game, and they should have no problem holding down this Terrapin offense that has really done nothing away from uh, Maryland all season long. Well, that's a little cheap in my regard. I'll play UCLA here. It, kind of strange. I mean, UCLA, it's a brand new team uh, for the most part. And Maryland, I think, had four returners from that team a year ago, and they can't hit water. <laughs> I don't know why they keep shooting threes. They can't make any, but they keep doing it anyway. Uh, very strange start to the Maryland Terrapins uh, year for sure. UCLA tonight, though, looking to get back on track. And we do have also another pretty interesting game, uh, one that I would not want to be taking on this team in any way, shape, or form right now there, Trey, given the back-to-back -back losses and the nature of those losses. But Mississippi Valley State needs a check. They're going to get that check here tonight. They're also probably going to get their ass handed to them against Baylor. Uh, what do we do in this game tonight? Yeah, so er, this morning I played Baylor minus 38 and a half. It's a 4% mm -hmm. play for me. That number is gone. So I just, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know that I did play Baylor minus 38 and a half. I would probably lay up to 40 here. And I'll give you like an alternate way to bet this if you're just getting in now or you didn't you know, get my picks this morning. So let's, all I'm going to say about Mississippi Valley is what, basically what Joe said. They're 0 and 11. They're here to get a paycheck. Uh, they've only played by games this year. This is their 11th straight road game against pretty much all power conference teams. Uh, but that's life in the swag. So that that's nothing new. 
And, it, you know, you're more or less trying to figure out if the line is right. And, and in this case, I don't think it is. I, I made this. The reason I kind of jumped in right away with 38 and a half um, and CT and I were talking about this on our, on our, on our walk out of Madison Square Garden uh, is I would make this more like low 40s, like maybe 42 or 43. So I thought that was a little bit low. Um, Baylor, the re like, there's reasons that they should be hyped up for this game. The obvious one is the Michigan State bloodbath loss, followed by letting that Duke game slip away, you know, and coming in now on back-to-back losses. The second reason is this is going to be the last game ever at the Farrell Center. Well, maybe not ever. I don't think, you know, they may, they may still keep that place open, but they're moving uh, to Foster Pavilion for the Cornell game. Um, so this is the mm-hmm. last game that they're going to play in what's been their arena forever. I think people will probably show up for that. You know, you know, people that are close to the program, I'm sure there's some sort of send off there. So probably a little bit better of a, of a crowd than you would typically get for a Mississippi Valley state game on a, on a Friday night in December. Um, but the other reason I really like Baylor here is they still, you know, one thing this Bears team has done this year and has done extremely well is shoot the ball. In Mississippi Valley State, they're just going to sit in their zone. Uh, George Ivory, second-year coach, Mississippi Valley State, is one of the few coaches in the country that still plays almost exclusively zone. Uh, there's not many of them, especially after our guy Jim Beheim retired last year. Not many that still just sit in the zone through thick and thin, but Ivory seems to be one of those guys, and that's not what you want. <laughs> it's not going to have a ton of success doing that against a Baylor team that's currently number one in the country in three-point shooting, 42.3%. Uh, they're scoring 86.7 points per game, and they're shooting over 50% from the field, which is also a top-10 mark national. So what I look at here, you've got a motivated Baylor team who's probably going to want to show out for the, you know, there's going to be a crowd there, last game ever at Farrell Center. But but mostly, you know, this is a team that, I you know, I know, um, you know, had to hear it in the media down there. Um, Mark Titus called them soft on like a national podcast um, after the Michigan State game. So they've been hearing the rumblings, you know, that they're that they're not as good as their ranking. And and I just think you're going to see a get right spot here for Baylor. I think they're going to crack 100. So if you miss the 38 and a half and you don't want to come out and lay a bad number and lay 41 or whatever it is right now, see if your site has a team total for this game. Because I'm pretty sure it's Baylor maybe like, over 91, 92. It's going to be in the low 90s. I'll be shocked if we don't see Baylor hit triple digits here. And um, it's part of the reason I like them to cover such a big number. Uh, so if you're getting triple digits, you're going to cover that team total at whatever it is. Um, I think 95 would cover just about any team total, even if it's teams. So uh, Baylor minus 38 and a half is a 4% client play. And I'll throw in the team total over as a little bonus play for the show. They, uh, yeah, they uh, 0 and 11, like you said, I think on average, they've lost every game by about 34 points and, uh, boy, they're going to be angry in Baylor tonight here. So this should be extremely interesting to see where it goes from there for poor Mississippi Valley state. Hey, but what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? That's what they say there. Uh, maybe they'll be, uh, maybe they'll be pretty good in the swag this year. Uh, We do have a couple of best bets we're going to get to there. And as uh, Brian uh, Leonard alluded to, apparently uh, the cat and I, we go way back, but that's okay. We also (laughs) have uh, an opportunity for you guys just joining us uh, to hit that subscribe button. If you are new to us here at Wager Talk TV, Uh, plenty of content, uh, guys, about all the daily games, whether it be the NHL, uh, whether it be college hoops, the NBA, Uh, Plenty of action coming up still in uh, the bowl season. Still got to crown a national champion in college football, the NFL. We got something for everyone here. So join the family, hit that subscribe button. And those of you joining us live here on this Friday, we certainly appreciate it. Go ahead, hit the like button. Give us those thumbs up here as we get ready to drop a couple of best bets on the slate here today. Brian Leonard, in addition to college basketball. Tell us uh, what else you got going on here today and break down the best bet with Lafayette and Rice coming up a little bit later as well. I'm actually passing in the NHL today. Had a tough day yesterday. Had three games were just about five minutes to go in the game and uh, they were all coin flips. We lost them all. So 
Uh, I did go four and two in bas college basketball because that continues to go well. I've got uh, six college basketball plays up today, and you can get them for one low cost package. Uh, I do want to say regarding the Baylor play that Trig just spoke about, mm. I made the line forty six. So uh, my clients Ooh. already got Baylor also. <laughs> So mm -hmm. I, I think uh, we're on the right side there. And let's, uh, let's see if we can get a winner for everybody. Uh, you mentioned the Lafayette-Rice game. Uh, Raging Cajuns are 6-5 and five thus far. No success whatsoever when playing true road games. Lafayette lost at Toledo, Samford, Louisiana Tech, and McNeese State. In those games, they permitted 87, 88, 72, and 74 points. The opponent field goal percentage against Lafayette this year is 53%. So they don't play very good defense, and especially on the road, very similar to the game we just spoke about um, for my big game breakdown. Rice is only 6-6 six and six on the season, but they really put it together as of late. Bialza won five of six games, with the only loss coming at Houston. And there's no shame in losing to the Cougars, because that's a very good basketball team. This is the final game in the month of December for Rice. They've got the rest of the holiday off. I don't believe they played till like January 3rd. Uh, they'd love to enter the break with a winning mark, and a win here would put them at 7-6. and six. Uh, I saw this team play in Vegas earlier and didn't think much of them, but they've gotten better as the season goes on, and that's what you have to do when you're handicapping teams is you can't be stuck in your ratings. You've got to be able to say, okay, you know, maybe I was wrong on this team. And I think Rice has proven me wrong here, and I hopefully uh, they get us the cash tonight. Uh, they played some very tough competition facing the likes of Texas, Indiana State, who scared the crap out of me last time I was on this show because they waited mm -hmm. around to the last minute to get that cover. Uh, New Mexico and the previously mentioned Cougars. All of those games are either on a neutral court or on the road. Rice is 5-1 and one straight up at home with the only loss coming earlier in the season against Harvard. This race seems playing well now. They've got a goal to uh, have a winning record going into the break. And Lafayette just hadn't shown me enough on the road to be able to trust them to keep this close. Once again, I'll lay it here with the home team. Yeah, seems like a uh, seems like a pretty safe bet there. Back in Rice at home in this spot here tonight. I am uh, I am with you here. So best bet with Rice coming up. We got another best bet coming up as well. Adam Trigger. Uh, this shocks me in the least bit, uh, this best bet coming up. But I do need, uh, because you said the game was on, uh, can you tell me what the hell is going on with the Sienna Brown game right now there, uh, Trig? Is Sienna boat racing Brown right now, your alma mater here? What's going on? Now, it looks like it, Joe. I, this would have, I mean, Sienna was really close to being <laughs> a, a bet for me yesterday. You and I talked about it off air. <laughs> yeah. We talked about it. And I said, ah, it, it got hit quickly from 13 and a half down to 11. I didn't want to take a bad number. I'm also not, I wasn't like totally sold at this being the time to jump in, but they did get Sean Durr Gordon clear from a waiver. Um, it, it, we talked about it on the show on Tuesday that I didn't think it would matter against Cornell and it didn't, they got killed. Uh, but this, that game got bet all the way down to nine and sure enough, yep. Sienna right off the bat up 10. So uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I do think they improve. I don't think it's possible for them to get any worse. So uh <laughs> Who knows? Uh, but yeah, I didn't a... didn't make it to the window with that one, and I'll probably regret it because uh, they're already they're already out to a great start. Um, so t I do want to. I, I, oh, point go ahead. And Canisius, because this is your next uh, fantastic uh, game. Yeah, I would expect nothing less uh, than this game from you and a best bet. So Canisius and High Point seems like a bit of a big number. What is it? Eight, eight and a half. Uh, high Point laying it. What are you thinking? So first, I just want to point out real quick before I get into the breakdown of this game, I have a 5% college basketball Ooh. best bet tonight, max bet. Uh, I've hit all three of them so far in December. Um, per, yeah, so perfect 3 and, 0 and three and O on those this month. That goes tonight. And so because I so badly want you guys to buy that play, I'm just going to give you the other two four percenters that I currently have. Uh, three plays in total for me today and two of them I'm going to give out on the show. I've already talked about the Baylor game, and I'm going to give this one out in a second. But first, Joe, I'll start my handicap. You you had a great idea. You texted me earlier today and said, Trig, you should do sort of a, a you know, middle of the season, like, review. I, I preview 30 teams ahead of the season and, you know, kind of bringing them up to 
you know, what did I get right? What did I get wrong? Uh, and so one of the teams that I talked about prior to the season a lot, like if you watch wager talk shows, I forced Canisius down your throat at any chance that I could have possibly gotten. <laughs> and, uh, <Yep. laughs> you know, I had pumped the brakes on them a little bit of, you know, in the coming weeks after that, because star point guard Taj Tedeschi, the guy that I said could end up being an outside chance to, to win player of the year in the Mac got hurt like two weeks into the season and hasn't played since, but we're now close to two months into the season. And I have to say that I still think Canisius is almost as good, even with him not being there uh, because of the emergence of CM Utenjal. And I'm now back in with the Griffs. So Listen, Stavesky is an insane talent, okay? Like, the guy is awesome. If he was healthy, he'd probably be one of the best players in the MAC. But him being out opened the door for Utenjal to, to start. He is a guy that was going to come off the bench. He now He is now the starting point guard. He's going for 15.6 points per game. So you, you have to look at the fact that you would probably not be getting that production from him if Stavesky was in there because he wouldn't be getting those types of minutes. So he's really stepped up and, and, and kind of taken the role that, you know, the role that Stavesky would have played uh, and has also done it being very productive, leading the team in scoring. The other thing I want to point out as far as Stavesky is concerned is he only played in two games and he wasn't that effective because what's going to likely keep him out the rest of this season is an injury that was lingering from, from last year that he's had to deal with before. So Canisius doesn't get reported on very much. And I think that's why the, their numbers are have been low pretty much every game since, uh, because I think the market and the odds makers probably don't really know when Stavesky's coming back. They never talk about it. He's always just sort of listed as like doubtful or whatever. Um, but I've got pretty good intel that that he's probably done for the year. So high point gets bet up from six to about eight. But some of that is just like high points gotten, they, they've been getting slammed every single time by the betting public. They cover every game, Joe. They've got one of the best yep. ATS records in the country. I think the only game they didn't cover going off of memory was when they were like a huge favorite against NC a and They cover almost every game. They blew out NC Greensboro earlier in the week. I thought that was a really impressive win. But they've done it by shooting the absolute lights out. And I just don't know how sustainable that is for this high point team. You've got to remember high point was not supposed to be this good this year. This is a, a program that was in a little bit of a transition. Um, they fired their coach last year. This was a roster that had Jaden house and Zach Austin who are now at Rhode Island and Pitt respectively. Um, this was supposed to be like a rebuilding year for first year coach, Alan Huss. And he's got them playing just incredible out of the gate. But I have to take that with a little bit of a grain of salt and think that they might come back down to earth at some point because so much of their success has been predicated on how well they've shot the ball and scored the basketball. And, and I'm just not sure you're going to see it at that rate all year long. Like There's got to be some sort of regression to the mean for that offense. Whereas Canisius, again, I'm starting to power rate them where I had them at the beginning of the season before Stavesi got hurt because of how good Utenjal has played. And the fact that Trey Dinkins, another guy that, you know, I really liked coming into the season for Canisius has been awesome as expected. And the other thing I talked about prior to the year with Canisius is how deep this team was. Um, the fact that Stavesky probably could have transferred somewhere if he really wanted mm. to, but he loved the group they had coming back and they go seven or eight deep. So when I add all of that up, Canisius plus eight seems like a pretty good bet here. I do think the number is too high, Joe, and this is a 4% client play for me. All right, there you go. Canisius, it is for one last time. And of course, our good friends from the Gold Sheets, they've got themselves a play of the day and uh, seems to be maybe in uh, some agreement here with Brian Leonard as well as they like uh, the spot that Rice is in tonight, laying the four, the four and a half. Uh, might have something to do with the fact that Rice, again, 5-0 and against the number when favored, winning those games by an average of 20.6 points a game. And the Cajuns' defense, well, 
outside the top 200 in efficiency, effective field goal uh, percentage, and, oh, yeah, two-point shooting. So not a great defense, and they've lost four, uh, the first four road games of the season for them. So no way uh, can they look at Lafayette. They instead are going to focus on Rice here tonight coming up, laying the points at home to get it done, and we'd encourage you guys to take a look at our friends at thegoldsheet.com. Great information, great write-ups on all the games, guys. Definitely head on over there and check it out. And as long as you are perusing the internet, wagertalk.com, visit Brian Leonard's page there. As he told you, plenty of college hoops games available tonight. Trig's got that. One, two, three, four, five percent best bet tonight in college hoops available Go get it. He just gave you the other two that he's given out. Go get it. 5% play right now. No reason not to make it a profitable Friday heading into a big holiday weekend across the sports betting landscape. And on behalf of Brian and Adam, we certainly want to wish you and yours a very happy and safe holiday weekend. We'll be back again next week as we get ready for a conference play coming up going to be a huge college basketball season to start the new year and we've got you covered here at wager talk tv have a merry christmas a happy holiday we'll see you again next week and click on that video on your screen right now and get all the head-to-head matchups all the big games coming up over the next uh 24 to 48 hours they're just a click away go get them and we'll see you again next week merry christmas